Hi, I'm uh, Tim Morris. I work at Brooklyn's Museum. I'm the administrator for the members organization and I uh, brought along my car today, uh, as you can see, an MGF. The car uh, is a 2000 model year MGF. Fairly standard, it's the variable valve control version. I bought this car as new in 2000, so I've actually had it for 17, coming on for 18 years now, which is the uh, longest I've ever owned a car. Um, the basic car is a, it's a 1.8 uh, litre K-series engine uh, with a VVC control on it. It's capable of about 130 miles an hour, uh, 147 horsepower on this. It was the, the highest powered version available at the time, although they've since produced a 160 horsepower version. It's been photographed a few times for magazines, it's been in Classics Monthly, and uh, more recently it was in a new magazine that came out about a year or so ago, um, Modern Classics. It was in the second edition of that. It's, it's fairly standard. Um, I say it's quite they're quite a reasonable sports car it was the best-selling sports car of its time um, outselling the Mazda MX-5 which was its major rival so with this particular car um, a lot of people do modify them but I haven't done too much with this one it has got new wheels which caused a, a bit of a stir and still do on the internet forums they're called uh, the Swedish wheels other than that, the only other things I've really done to the car, changed the washer jets, <laughs> which is uh, pretty minor. Um, it's got a sports exhaust on the back, a Scorpion sports exhaust, which gives it a few extra brake horsepower, but not a lot. So we're probably up to about 150 horsepower on this one now. But other than that, it's remained pretty much the same. Yeah, over the years, as I say, we've had it quite a long time and certainly initially we were doing a lot of European trips in the car and it's quite small, as you can see, but the boot is reasonable. Um, when they marketed these originally, they said the marketing ploy was you could fit two sets of golf clubs in the back. Why you would want to put two sets of golf clubs in the back, I'm not quite sure, but that was what they were saying. And we have traveled around Europe in this uh, with our suitcases and um, clothing and so on. And it does all fit quite nicely. There's a, because the engine's in the back, you do actually get a little extra space in the front as well. So uh, if you're stopping off at the duty free, you can put a few bottles of wine underneath the bonnet, which is uh, quite handy, extra little bit of storage in there. Uh, here at Brooklands is uh, an appropriate place to be filming the MGF because MG have got a, a very long history at Brooklands dating back to the racing days um, when you find all sorts of MGs uh, around the track. Um, there's also a connection with the MGF uh, more recently where in 1995 when the car was launched uh, the Southern Dealer launch was actually held here at Brooklands um, with one of the early cars down in the Sunbeam Cafe, which is just below the members bar where we are now. Since then, the MGF has made uh, regular appearances at the MG Days uh, that are held here. The MGF in the early days was marked by large birthday parties that MG actually organised themselves. Uh, the first one uh, and the second one, so 1996 and 1997, um, they held two very large events at Gaydon, uh, which is now the British Motor Museum. Um, they stopped doing that for the following year and it was picked up by various forum members for the uh, third birthday party, which was held here at Brooklands. MGF has got quite a history uh, with Brooklands, um, which stretches right back to those early MG days when they were racing here.